Can you believe this? Can a hologram fake a death? Well, imagine a life-size projection, a live audience, stunned. What if the person on stage is not alive, but looks real enough to convince thousands? How about millions worldwide? Today, holograms, hoaxes, and legal and moral minefields that follow. I'm Phoenix. This is Phoenix Talks. So imagine a host on camera, energetic. Imagine a world where people can appear and disappear on stage in real time using advanced telepresent booths and displays. It's great for concerts, but dangerous if used to fake events that could affect lives and a legal process. We're not teaching you how to do that. We're investigating how the tech works, how it could be misused, and what the law says, and definitely how to spot fakery. Let's dig in. Version Room, you just won the Global Telepresence Video Conferencing Product of the Year Award. And what I'm about to experience, so I've been told, absolutely has to be seen to be believed. The DVE Immersion Room takes video conferencing to a whole new level. And I must say, I'm already very impressed with this luxury boardroom environment. Hi, Sarah. I'm David your uh, immersion room tour guide. This is amazing. You're in 3D. Hi. Hi. I am glad that we could get together this way via real telepresence. That's what you're experiencing, real telepresence. It's the best way for people to connect around the world, and it's truly a revolutionary way for people to collaborate. This is beyond my experience. It looks like you're right here. Right. <laughs> I am. I'm right here via real telepresence. It's over a high bandwidth network connection. Here, let me show you. This is a nine foot wide volumetric 3D image that appears over the boardroom table. This will take your presentations to a whole new level. And that's just one example. Uh, this is the most realistic teleprison system ever developed. And it's also an advanced simulation environment for business, education, scientific research, and defense. So where are you exactly? Well, I am in Irvine, California, but anyone can connect in this personal way to anywhere else in the world. I mean, it's virtually limitless. London, New York, Tokyo, you name the city and we can make telepresence happen there. I can easily see leaders of corporations, diplomats, even heads of state in the immersion room. It breaks down the barrier of distance like we're all here in the same room. Exactly. The DVE Immersion Room was driven by a passion to create a collaboration environment that provides the most natural conversational experience and also empowers executives, engineers and others with new communication tools. For example, an executive can be immersed with images from his notebook that gives him or her a compelling tool to press a point home or close a deal. The Immersion Room also gives engineers, scientists, educators, and, well, anybody really, an impressive tool to interact with 3D models. Real-time computer rendering enables an unparalleled way to experience virtual objects. The DVE Immersion Room has been years in the making and is based on an expansive pattern portfolio. The key to this impressive environment is a stretched polymer which is totally transparent. And, smartly, this allows a camera to aim right through it for eye contact while conferencing. The global economy has increasingly required people to work together from all over the world. Multinational corporations are experiencing firsthand the pressures of employees having to take frequent international trips. The expense and fatigue is taxing on both the individual and the organization. I'd like to illustrate a few points about some of the problems of traditional video conferencing. Here I am in one of several TVs. These multi-screen systems create a confining feeling. I'm in a box and the camera is mounted above. So from your perspective, I'm looking down and away. Maybe if I... Nope, that's worse. Now I'm talking, looking up at the sky. Nonverbal communication matters. It's the whole point of video conferencing and telepresence. And it's time to move beyond the frame. 
The future is immersion with pristine, wide images, and it's here now. The DVE Immersion Room frees people from the confines of displays, and it lets them get up, move around, and be themselves. While the Immersion Room is DVE's premier telepresence solution, it has products for every organization's needs. The DVE huddle quickly turns any small meeting room into a real telepresence suite. It's also frameless, creating a greater impression that people are actually in the room. Companies install dozens of these huddles on a single campus, so employees can quickly stay connected with their colleagues around the globe. The immersion room is intended for corporate communications, but I've discovered another use. Imagine seeing your favorite movie or 3D video game on a wide immersive screen with images floating in midair. Having the ultimate home theater would certainly get your neighbors talking. Yeah. There are in fact plenty of studies and there was a recent study by MIT that shows exactly how this 3D hologram works. From an ethical standpoint, what's the harm when advanced visual tech blurs reality and fiction? Well, how does consent factor in when a person's likeness is displayed in a convincing way? And also, what responsibility should platform promoters have when using this type of tech if they did? I mean, you have to admit, plenty of us have been asking the question, what did we witness? I mean, this would be great for concerts and museum, museum demos, remote guest appearances, telemedicine promotions, but real examples where system brings benefits, accessibility, reduced travel, entertainment value. I mean, think about it. Every technology with power has a potential for misuse. Did we see this? in this event that took place? Is this even possible? I always question the unthinkable. I mean, think about it. We live in a digital aid. Are companies and platforms perpetrating deep fakes and manipulated media? Are there any laws, case studies, public responses to this? I think obviously this should be investigated. I mean, think about the technology companies building safeguards, policymakers drafting regulations. Is this something on the horizon that should be looked at? I mean, think about continuing between creation and detection. How do we know? Is what we witnessed even true? I mean, the tech amazes us, right? And, but it could be used to be deceptive. We should celebrate the benefits while using rules and tools and public awareness to prevent harm. If you found this video useful, like and subscribe to Phoenix Talks. Drop your questions, leave comments. I'll follow up. I, you know me, I don't share things that I can't verify. As always, be well.